Hi, my name's Heidi Conley. I'm a cardiologist at Mayo Clinic. And today we're gonna to talk about atrial septal defects. But before we do that, let's talk about how the normal heart works. The normal heart has four chambers and four valves. The top chambers are called atria, right atrium on the right, left atrium on the left. The bottom chambers are called ventricles, right ventricle on the right, left ventricle on the left. The blue blood or venous blood or deoxygenated blood coming back from the body enters the two big veins and drains into the top chamber on the right called the right atrium. It then flows through a valve into the bottom chamber called the right ventricle. As that chamber fills, it gets the message to pump and blood is pumped out to the lungs. In the lungs, the blue blood is oxygenated and then the oxygenated or red blood returns to the left side of the heart and in the same manner enters the top chamber on the left called the left atrium, goes through a valve into the bottom chamber called the left ventricle and as that chamber fills it gets the message to pump and blood is then pumped to the body. Under normal circumstances there's no a connection between the left and right heart chambers after birth. In patients with an atrial septal defect, there's a hole or defect in the wall or septum which separates the two top chambers. This defect allows higher pressure oxygenated or red blood to transition from the left atrium to the right atrium and ultimately can cause enlargement of right heart chambers. Over time, the right atrium and right ventricle enlarge and ultimately decreased heart function can occur. How is an atrial septal defect found? A number of different ways. It may be an abnormal heart examination with an abnormal heart sound or a murmur heard on physical examination. Symptoms such as breathlessness, fatigue, abnormal heart rhythms, or even a stroke-like spell, or sometimes an abnormal cardiology test, such as an electrocardiogram, chest x-ray, echocardiogram, CAT scan, MRI, or even heart catheterization may be the first way to identify an atrial septal defect. How should patients with atrial septal defects be managed? Well, it depends a little bit on where the defect is. There are a number of different locations that are beyond the scope of this discussion. But in general, a small atrial septal defect should be observed. A medium or large uncomplicated atrial septal defect can be closed. And the types of closure include either catheter-based or surgical closure. But regardless, whatever type of defect you have, long-term follow-up by a cardiologist who has special interest in these types of defects is important. Successful closure should result uh, in a marked improvement in symptoms and a decrease in the size of the right heart. So there's the enlargement. When the defect is closed, the right heart chambers return to normal or near normal, depending on the age at which this is performed. So here's the atrial septal defect closure.